Hi, this is Vanessa Joy here for Adorama TV, and I'm going to show you exactly how I retouch faces in Lightroom. Now you may think, why would you retouch faces in Lightroom when you can go into Photoshop and do a much better job? Well, yes, you can do a much better job. But for me, a lot of what I want to do can simply be done in Lightroom. And for me, it's faster in getting stuff out to my clients that might not be final photos, but maybe the previews the night of the wedding or even just a quick photo for one of my models to post on Instagram. You also have to take into consideration what it is that your clients notice and what they'll be using the photos for. Now, if you're doing a lifestyle photography shoot for an Instagram, model or something like that, where are these photos going to go? They're going to go on her Instagram. They're going to be that big. So getting in there with something like frequency separation, which is a great video here that Mark Wallace did a little while ago, and I do use it and consult it every once in a while, but it might not be the right tool for the job considering the final purpose of the photo. Let's jump into how I get this done. The images here I thought we would use. Let's just start off with the first one going into the develop module. Now I'm working with the raw files in all of these. So the first thing that I typically do is just edit the photo overall. There's not a lot I want to do, but let's just give it like my, oh, actually, no, let's give this one the gray day. So this is kind of a grungy look for this particular photo. So what does grungy do? It highlights all of the skin textures we'll just say there we go so let me just zoom it in just a little bit closer so we can see now I'm gonna go over to my local adjustment brushes the local adjustment brushes are really where you're going to be able to do retouching and we have to think of it not as retouching in the sense of maybe cloning or healing we have to think of it in terms of light and dark and uh, you know clarity and sharpness and things that we can control in Lightroom so I have settings already here. So I'll be using these, but I'll show you what some of them look like. Let's just start off with soften skin. You can see my settings there. The way we do this, we just kind of click and drag around. I'm doing this fairly roughly because I want to do this quickly for you. What you can do is you can hit control to see your mask and then you can hit option. And you see how that little tab comes with little arrows. You can hit option and drag down to lessen what you just did, or you can drag up to enhance what you just did. And obviously that's absolutely crazy that high. <laughs> Let's just go back to where we were. Just a little trick there. Another way that you can do this is come over here to the arrow and you can use your amount and bring it down or bring it up. And then of course you can fine tune your lines using the erase button like a, a did a little bit too much here, a little bit too much here. You can see it was kind of in the eyes. And then what you might want to do is go back to your brush. And I was at 100% flow, which means I'm using the max denseness of the brush. You can bring it to, let's say, about half and then come around maybe with a smaller brush and come in here because you don't want a huge stark difference between skin that you've smoothed and skin that is, you know, we're trying to keep sharp. Uh, this is overdoing it in my opinion at least. I don't want it to look too crazy. Let's just erase some of the lips here. Uh, so I would probably back this off to a little bit more natural and you can see the difference here. It does smooth it out. It's just not making it look as porcelain fake. Now, another reason you don't want to overdo it here is because essentially what you're doing in Lightroom is you're lessening the sharpness, the noise, the clarity, the texture. It is not the most refined way to retouch by any stretch of the imagination. So you don't want to do a ton. All right, let's go ahead and hit new. That's what you do when you want to get to your next brush. I'm going to go under remove dark circles and just come underneath. This is going to have a smoothing effect. And if you're thinking about dark circles, you're thinking about lifting your shadows, which is what we're doing here. And again, we can go ahead and bring them up a little bit if we want to. And you can use this for different areas. Let's just say you didn't particularly like the shadow that is thrown on her face here. Let me hit new and actually keep that same one, but we'll bring the amount up and my flow back up. And you can see this is a way you can actually lessen the shadows if you want. Maybe fix a little bit of light ratio that you didn't intend. All right, let's go ahead to the eyes. Now I have a white eyes, 
and you're gonna go right to the whites of the eyes and it's just gonna take some of the gray out. Now you don't wanna do this again too crazy because then you're gonna end up glowing her eyes out. Let's just bump it up, right? A little bit too much, but somewhere in between just to kind of smooth out the veins, get a little bit of brightness in the eyes, looks good. Gonna go ahead and hit new. Go into saturate eyes because she has some great color here. So we're just gonna enhance that a little bit. Go again into new and I have punch lashes. And this is just gonna help make the lashes a little bit more dramatic. I'm gonna bring my flow up all the way. There we go. Just add a little bit of contrast there. Now this is really good for the eyebrows too. So you could come up here to the eyebrows and darken them in so you don't have to worry about, you know, just this was a little while after makeup application, so it does fade away a bit. All right, let's go ahead and hit new. Uh, and then other ways that you can retouch, I think you get the idea here, we're just going throughout the face, but you can go to your healing brush here and maybe touch up things uh, like blemishes on the skin if you want to. Uh, it's not gonna be as you know refined again as Photoshop, but it definitely gets the job done for a bit. You know, maybe you want to fix this little bit on her lip. Let's see how it does there. Little makeup clump. Great. That sounds good. You know, let me take my tool overlay to auto. All right, just so you don't see that. Maybe we'll fix another little lipstick right there. And sometimes it chooses the wrong spot. So you just want to bring it to a good spot. There we go. And you know, in here with her lips, maybe that's an area you would actually go into, um, let's go to the softened skin and just soften a little bit of her lips here. Again, not quite as much as my brush originally has, but just a little bit. Now let's go ahead and zoom this picture out and do a nice before and after. So this is our after and that's our before. It makes a pretty big difference and it's a decent job again for just being able to retouch in Lightroom. All right, so let's go ahead to another image right here. And again, I would probably just use my Joyfully Simple. This is my most, I don't really use presets a whole bunch unless I'm just kind of having fun. But this Joyfully Simple preset that I have, it just does a bunch of things that I like. You can kind of see here, different highlights. I do a little bit with the detail and sharpening, noise reduction, a little bit in the you know tone curve. So it's just kind of a simple process that I like to use. And then we'll come in here and mess around again with the skin. We'll start with the softened skin. Get that going. And it's just doing a very little bit, just a little bit of cleanup. I don't have to do this on her neck because this was shot at, let's see, 2.8. And her neck is already softened because of the shallow depth of field. That looks pretty good. And I usually just go down, okay? White and eyes, that's the next thing I'll do. I personally do not love a super over-processed image. You can really take this way too far. I'm going to saturate eyes, saturate her eyes. And you could also use this on her lips if you wanted to as well. Get a little bit of lip color out of there. And I think the only other thing I want to do is remove dark circles, which really isn't even dark circles on her. It's, it, it's mostly just makeup that had, that had fallen. Oh, and you know what? Let's go ahead to punch lashes. There we go. It's just, you know, darkening the blacks, adding some contrast. And it's helpful, you know, whether you get, you have brushes that you've gotten somewhere else or you create your own, it's just helpful to click through like that. I left the settings here so you can see them if you want to make your own. And then there's our before and after. So again, just super slight. Let's just do one more very quickly so you can get the idea. Let's zoom this in and then I'll show you the before and afters all together. And you can just see how quick it is. So again, I tend to start with the soften the skin and I do it pretty roughly like this, kind of clown facing it as they say. And then I'll just come in with my eraser if I want to see you know, the actual mask, I can do that. Uh, again, by hitting control. There you go. So a little bit too crazy. I'm going to take, erase it, oops, erase it off the eyes. There we go. 
and erase it off her mouth. And then I erase it off any kind of lines, like her nose here, eyebrows. And then overall, I think I did a little bit too much, so I'm just gonna go into the amount here, or again, I can just hit on Mac option and then kind of drag it down. You can see it moving on the right-hand side, see how the amount is going down. Just so I find that it's, you know, maybe hit the before and after to see. It's just smoothing it out a little bit. You know, again, it's not what you would do in Photoshop. This is not high-end retouching by any stretch of the imagination. I'm moving some dark circles. But you know, if the only goal of this photo is maybe a quickie image and you're just going to give it to her to throw on her Instagram story real quick, then you know what? This is certainly a better option than giving her a completely rough image of herself and then she throws it into like a Facetune app and then really destroys your photograph. So I definitely prefer to have a little more control over it versus her, um, again, going like into Facetune. No thanks. That just makes it look really, really awful. So again, just having a little bit of control is nice as a photographer, even though, you know, sometimes they just do whatever they're going to do. I do have my D Jersey skin here. If uh, you have somebody that's just a little bit too much uh, self tanner. All right. And then last thing, we're just going to brighten her eyes a little bit. And that looks like it was too much. So let's go down by about half. Look at our before and after. Nice. You know, another thing that you can do also, if you go to new and go to the soften skin, you could put it over her hair like this. And then one thing I like to do, we'll probably actually back, now I'll do it in here. I wanna keep the texture, so I'll put the texture back and then I'll take the highlights and you can bring the highlights up or even the midtones, and then you can kind of mess around with her, with the way that her hair looks too. If you do contrast, it's almost like a finishing spray. If you do a little bit of contrast and then a little bit of highlights, it's just kind of nice to uh, mess with the hair. And I just saw a spot where I have too much softness going on. There we go. I think it's actually, I think it's actually on her skin. So let's just erase that. Good. And then check our before and after. All right, just see how her hair also is nice and smoothed out. All right, let's zoom it in. I'm giving away a camera. We're giving away a Canon camera, a Profoto A1X, a copy of my book, and a copy of Capture One version 20. There are lots of ways to enter, so make sure that you do. Check the link below and come back daily for new ways to enter this contest. All right, so let's take a look at all of the before and afters. We'll put them side by side so you can see them again. It's just a little bit of retouching in Lightroom super fast, you don't have to worry too much about it, but it's just a nice way to give a little bit of polishing to your images. If you like what you're seeing, make sure that you download my free posing inspiration guide. It's full of ideas for posing for couples, groups, and individuals. You can snag that in the link below. Make sure that you hit subscribe, ring the bell, share this video, like, and comment. And if you have any other questions, please comment below. I do my best to answer all of them. I'm Vanessa Joy here for Adorama TV.